guys, welcome. This is a general reading for the collective of Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, starting a whole new series of readings for the collective. Um, welcome, cross watchers, and for those of you who may be brand new to the channel, happy to have you here. Please do come into the comments. My throat is a little weird today. Um, come into the comments. I'm just hearing myself. Say hello. Let me know where you are tuning in from. That is my most favorite thing to read about is all, you know, where you're from. I will come back around later on this evening and um, give you a proper welcome. So I do reply to comments, just so you know. So I'm uh, wanting to, first of all, full moon and Pisces, lunar eclipse, blessings to all. I did do that reading yesterday. We are still sort of in the energy, even though the moon has moved on to a different sign, doesn't matter, uh, because this is, we're now in the eclipse wormhole. Um, we're in eclipse season, so we're still kind of riding the waves. So this series of readings will um, be dedicated to that as was the last series of readings. So I'm pulling from Divine Master's Oracle. We're gonna see what Divine Master is supporting you for this first leg of the journey of this eclipse season. It's a newer deck, so I wanna make sure I'm not, okay. You are getting Metatron and Sandalphon sacred connection. But of course, Aries, synchronicity, divine connection, understanding lessons. Let me make sure you can see that. I know the lighting can be a little difficult and challenging. You're getting the sacred connection card. That is what I'm here to read about. I read about twin flame soulmates, otherwise known in the collective as sacred connections. Perfect. Yes, Metatron is um, the um, divine master for the sign of Virgo, and we are in Virgo season. So that feels um, a little aligned for me. I forget Sandalphon, but regardless, we had the synchronicity card came out for uh, the full moon reading that I uploaded yesterday on the 17th. So that feels auspicious as well. Divine connection and understanding lessons. And that is what we're going to be reviewing today in the spread. So let me pull it for you. It's a brand new spread that I'm using just for this series of readings because I had all the comments yesterday and people saying thank you and full moon blessings and all of that. But I always know when something strikes a nerve when I get emails and I had lots of emails from the reading yesterday people talking about lessons from the past and things that they need baggage that they're carrying things they need to release and how hard and like they're feeling blocked so I did a little research and I found this spread so I'm just going to pull the cards and then I'm going to work you walk you through each of the cards what they're speaking to, and then we'll go back through and clarify. Okay, so it's new spread to me and to you. We're gonna do it together. All from the top of the deck. Mm -hmm. This is the lesson card. Understanding lessons is your oracle. And this is the six of cups, past life soulmate. What is the lesson from the past, whether in this sacred connection or in past relationships, okay? So this is talking about past lives. Card number two is the baggage card, seven of swords. What am I potentially carrying? What baggage am I carrying from either this connection or past relationships? Well, clearly something to do with shady energy. You know, it's the liar, cheater, stealer card. It can be about some avoidance or somebody who does you wrong, isn't on the level. Maybe you've been cheated on before and that's your baggage. Maybe partly how it's impacting you and the lesson you have to learn is 
about how it has led to you not trusting people's intentions. I know. See, and now I'm feeling the energy of this really heavily, like it's baggage, right? Card number three is the release card, Eight of Pentacles. So what do you need to sort of let go of from either this connection or past relationships? Well, the Eight of Pentacles is sometimes losing the forest for the trees. It is a card of focus and doing the work, and but it can be like getting lost in the details. So if you think about it, like when we zero in on something and we're so focused on something, there's this term where we can get myopic, right? It, when we're myopic, we're only seeing one thing through one lens to the exclusion of all the other details, okay? So we may need to le release that tendency to only see the negative, to only see um, people from, a p from the perspective of how they're trying to get over on us or how they're trying to cheat us or how they're trying to, you know, take mm -hmm. that negativity. Block. What is blocking you? <laughs> Four of Wands. Um, interesting. Uh, so it's what's blocking you from either you know, kind of opening up to what's available to you in this connection or from finding new love. Because you put everything, you put all your chips in on this connection. Or on, not on this connection. Let me reframe that. You put all your chips in on the construct of, right, my one true love. Do you remember the movie, The Notebook, right? I think that was when Ryan Gosling came on the scene. Oh my God. I'm doing an Aries reading, my daughter's an Aries, and I remember watching that movie with her and she was a child, uh, like preteen age, young. And I remember her, we watched it sitting side by side and I remember her saying to me, that's gonna be me. And I said, what do you mean? That's going to be you. And she said, I'm going to find my one true love. I know. And I said, Jillian, come on now. You know, you're going to date. You're going to meet boys. She said, no. The boys in my school are disappointing. <laughs> Which was true at the time. But she was like, ah. And she didn't, she didn't date, she didn't know. She had her eye on this prize. That is myopic. That is this, right? So I'm giving you that as an example. Daughter, if you're watching, my apologies. But yeah, what's blocking you from either finding new love or from, right, whatever it is that you need to kind of release to experience the fullness of what's available to you in this connection is whatever you have told yourself about what that one true love should be, feel like, seem like, look like, etc. This reading, Aries, seriously, or whoever you are watching, Forgive, what do you need to forgive? That your knight in shining armor, Prince Charming, Romeo, didn't live up, right? To the pedestal you placed them on. That whoever this person was, didn't live up to the ideal. They were, a soul having a human experience and toppled off the little pedestal. Didn't send, say the right thing in the card, didn't send the dozen roses, didn't, didn't book the right reservation, didn't, 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 didn't. Didn't call you at the right time, didn't invite you, didn't ask you out, didn't, 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 didn't. Whatever it is, fill in the blank. Knight of Cups. You need to forgive 
yourself first for creating the illusion. That's first. Forgive you first, right? And then forgive them, whoever they are, because there could be more than one. Hello. Guilty as charged. For not fulfilling the fantasy. And then number six, what do you need to work on? This is like the self-love position. Like what do you need to fill in you? Well, look at her staring down at those three cups, looking hand on hip, like, is this it? I'm so disenchanted. When the Ace of Cups is being offered by spirit, Right? We got, we got love coming into our viewfinder. Spirit's bringing that ace of cups. And we're like, hmm. So sometimes the four of cups can be about a missed opportunity. So we need to forgive ourselves for the illusion we created, the fantasy we bought into, and how others failed us. We also have to um, work on our self-love in terms of we are enough. We are enough. We don't need anyone else to fill our cups. Okay? Therefore, we don't get disillusioned. We don't get disappointed. We're not left unhappy and wanting more because our cup kind of runneth over with us. So that when it's put in front of us, we recognize it. Like recognizes like. Got it? Different kind of game sees game. It's a different kind of thing. So really beautiful, right out of the gate, whoever you are watching, because when I'm reading, I'm pulling off your energies. This is perfect for this particular lunar event with the eclipse and the beginning of eclipse season because we're heading now toward the new moon in Libra. So that's Venus ruled, and we want to be sure that we're releasing, that we're learning, that we're letting go of old baggage, that we're unblocking, we're forgiving, and we're resetting our self-love mechanism. Okay, goodness gracious. Six of Cups. This is the lesson. Yes. <clears throat> I feel like um, whether it's this relationship or past relationships, this one true love thing theme is coming through very loud and clear, past life love, a gift that you saw very clearly, um, and some form of resistance, uh, maybe even a hardening of the heart chakra, closing it off, um, I'm feeling guardedness. I'm feeling self-protection. These two cards specifically, self-protection. Since the Four of Pentacles is from the bottom of the deck, it's not something you may be cognizant of. It's something that kind of plays out in your unconscious awareness, in your psyche. Like outwardly, you might be a little standoffish, like keeping people at arm's length because letting this get too close is threatening. So the lesson from past relationships and or from this connection is if I let something that feels this good get too close, um, it has the potential to hurt. Right, because that's the baggage you've been carrying around because you probably have the scars. So let's see that Seven of Swords baggage. Whatever it, it was or is that you're carrying around potentially from, you know, it's about 
whoever it is you envisioned or whatever it is you conceptualized about someone you could go the distance with, King of Pentacles, masculine archetype of a life partner, right? Someone who's solid, someone who's there for you, someone who ha sh has your back, shows up for you, puts you first. It's not in the cards for me. All I get are people that take or people that put themselves first or people that don't have my best interest at heart. Two of Swords underneath is interesting because it sort of suggests that, you know, you've been constantly making decisions about who you can trust. And seeing the Wheel of Fortune here, it's all like you, there's some, some baggage that says it's not like I've got negative karma in this realm. I don't get the good guy. And so I constantly have to be on my guard. There's a constant decision-making process going on, an inner assessment. So release, what do you need to let go of? Eight of Pentacles. <laughs> How much work do you need to do? How many times do you need to kind of, well, let me look at this over one more time. Let me make sure I have all the details and all the confusion, all the options, because we're talking about a sacred connection, a divine connection, and, and it's almost like self-torture. The Seven of Cups can be about options. The Nine of Wands is about perseverance. Yes, but it's exhausting. It's exhausting. So that Eight of Pentacles, again, is, you know, you keep going in on and, and getting more, you know, deeper and deeper and deeper to where you lose all, all um, perspective. So that's what needs to be released. In order so that you can see the whole forest and all the red flags that have been ticked up all along, telling you, yeah, maybe you've seen enough. Maybe you have uh, enough to make that decision of who you can trust and who you can't. And whether or not somebody has chosen you in the same way you have chosen them. The lover's card is a card of choice. So it isn't necessarily that your picker is off. <laughs> it is almost as if uh, you keep trying to weed out those red flags and look deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper to find the green flag. if that makes sense. So what's blocking you here, either from finding new love, well, that's part of it, or from being open to the love that's right in front of you, we have this Four of Wands. And I kind of feel the four of wands, the, the block and the forgiveness thing sort of go hand in hand. Um, yeah. It's hard to move beyond that deception, that sense of betrayal hard to move beyond it so it's kind of hard to find the happiness it's hard to imagine yourself this is the sun our conscious awareness it's hard to see ourselves in that you know in that setting of the beginnings of life partnership successful the sun is about success the sun is also about feeling safe and protected in our vulnerability. It's hard to get to that. 
if we can't move past the times that we were vulnerable and got taken advantage of. So what I'm seeing here and what I'm believe what I'm I, it general reading, not a private reading, please take it as it resonates to you. Feeling like at some point you made a bad decision and that's what you can't get beyond and you're carrying it with you. When I say you made a bad decision, that's how karma works. This is a karma card, right? And karma is our friend. I mean, my gosh, it's what tells us when we're off our path and like the mother duck, it gets us back in alignment. Okay, 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 gotcha. So it feels like instead of seeing it as a corrective tool, you have long since been punishing yourself. Seeing yourself maybe as unworthy of and therefore shutting off your heart chakra, keeping everything at arm's distance and thereby blocking yourself from the love that is available to you. If you are not sobbing right now, this is not your reading. <laughs> I'm just here to tell you because it's taking everything in me not to cry. So, oh, like, what do we need to forgive here? Knight of Cups, poor Prince Charming. Yeah, Knight of Cups, Queen of Wands, love and passion. No meeting in the middle, no reconciliation, and instead banished from the kingdom. Need to forgive yourself, need to forgive that there was no forgiveness, need to forgive that there was no peace, need to forgive that there was no reconciliation, that there was no meeting in the middle, that there was no effort at a win-win outcome. Need to forgive it. Right? So someone walked away, something slipped through the cracks, somewhere something went terribly sideways, and it never got resolved. But you internalized it as a statement about your worth and value. And so if you can forgive that, starting with yourself, having internalized it instead of saying you know this person is the one who missed the opportunity not me they missed the opportunity four cups that's the kicker what do you need to work on for your own self-love and to kind of Get back on track as karma wants, because you know we have good karma. Wouldn't you love a new moon in Libra? Venus ruled Libra? To kick off something fabulous for you? Here's your card. It was their missed opportunity, not yours. Yep. Leave that shit behind. Pardon my français. Um, right. Leave that behind. Whatever it is, you're moving in a new direction. There is, if you're dealing with a divine masculine that did not see your worth and value, it is their lost opportunity. If this is someone that's still in the picture, and this is Aries energy, by the way. If, there, if there's someone still in the picture, you need to work on letting go of that part of yourself that questions your worth and value or puts it in the hands of someone else. Even worse. So that's what you need to work on. I kind of like the high priestess coming up in the unconscious position. 
because it does talk about your intuition. It does talk about that inner knowing. I know who I am at my core. I know what I'm worth. Oh, I'm going to be a whole different animal going forward. Yes. She's the moon. So I love seeing her here. It's almost as if, you know, how do I move forward, Laura? How do I, how do, I do all this? You trust your intuition. I'm going to be doing either like a small course or a workshop on this. I've been getting so many hits in the comments about intuition lately. So stay tuned for that. So this is, is it in a nutshell for you, my lovelies. That's what I have. I am going to take it to the extended. Um, and uh, in the extended, I want to look at your energy and your person's energy, like who you really wanted to watch about. This is focusing mostly on you. In the extended, your energy, your person's energy. Um, your blocks in the connection with your person and their blocks. So it's a little bit different than this. Um, the relationship overall, the connection, uh, uh, divine guidance, uh, messages and what may unfold going forward. So that's kind of what we're going to explore in the extended. So if this is speaking to you and now you want to dive deeper into your actual connection, the link to that extended is below. Okay. And, um, do check out, there are three different ways to get extendeds. So make sure you look before you click to buy at what you're getting, okay? Thanks so much. Um, and if you've been enjoying my readings and you haven't yet done so, please uh, click to subscribe below so that I can continue being here on this platform, bringing you these messages, helping you navigate your uh, relationship experiences. That's what I'm here to do. Thank you so much. I'll see you over at the extended. Bye for now.